This is an incredible play from Nakai right here. Watch him stop this stretch play. He gets through the line, and before the ball carrier can even get past his tackle, he stops him. We see Nakai right here. Again, how are you supposed to stop that? When he's past you before you get out of your stance, it's unstoppable. Watch this hit. As soon as the back gets the ball, that, ladies and gentlemen, is a kill shot. And this one right here, he's going to get the kill shot. He's going to force the fumble, and Wes Mifflin picks it up. Like I said, guys, the newest pit product that we have today is Nakai Johnson. Nakai, how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. So you just got back for some, from some lifting, so yeah. obviously you're staying in shape? Yes, sir. I always try to stay in shape as much as I can. I do as much as I can. I like it. I like it. So first question I always start off with is, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? A little bit about myself? Well, you know. Pittsburgh kid, Pittsburgh boy, you know, I'm 17 years old. Um, I'm a, I mostly like work out, hang out with friends. I like hanging out with friends a lot. Uh, social media, I'm more of a Snapchat type of guy, you know. I always, I'm always on Snapchat, I feel like. Um, yeah, I, I just like, I really like getting out the house, you know. I stay active, I stay out and about, you know. Pittsburgh people know that. They usually see me around. Yeah, that's cool. Um, you know, it, I feel like that's a pretty traditional, like, life for a, a teenage boy, you know what I mean? Just kind of yeah. chilling, and wherever it takes you, it takes you. Yes, sir. So, as I alluded to, um, you committed to Pitt. Uh, what what ultimately made you choose Pitt over every other school? I just, honestly, I, I love the city, you know what I'm saying? I really wouldn't want to be anywhere else but this city you know because like I'll go somewhere on vacation and like in a week or something like I'll have fun but like I always in my back of my head I'm like I got to get back home I got to get back to my city and like when I play I feel like I'm playing for somebody you know what I'm saying I'm putting on like you know you always got to represent where you're from and like if I play for the city you know I'm putting my city on the map and if I like hopefully if I make it to the NFL you know what I'm saying then that's when I can move around and stuff. But, like, right now, I'm, I'm happy where I'm at. You know, I can't complain. Yeah, that, that's really cool to hear. Um, you know, I, I'm from about 45 minutes to an hour south of Pittsburgh. Um, but, like, I, I feel that same way where, like, you know, about my area in the Pittsburgh area where it's, like, it's just tough to leave. You know, I've had job mm -hmm. opportunities in New Mexico and, you know, stuff like that. But I was just like, I don't, I don't know. I just like the vibe around here, man. Like, yeah. I don't know. Just, it's a it's a real strong vibe and you only have to be from Pittsburgh to get that vibe you know what I'm saying like most people's like oh this this and that like why don't you go here it's so much nicer here but you have to actually be from Pittsburgh to like know what I'm talking about I feel you, know? you on that man 100 percent was there was there any other schools that you were considering um at the time when I was getting my offers you know I was considering like I was just thinking as me, I was thinking of it like bigger schools, you know what I'm saying? I was uh, considering maybe Michigan. I was definitely thinking about Penn State and uh, Virginia Tech. When I went up to Virginia Tech, they had a very nice campus. Yeah, no, I definitely know what you mean. And, you know, Penn State's like one of those ones where um, people mm -hmm. who want to stay local, you know, the PA, you find that yeah, three yeah. schools are Ohio State because um, it's just – it's not far away from Pittsburgh at all. Yeah. Um, you know, Pitt, obviously, and then Penn State's a big one. So you usually find those hometown kids kind of bounce around in, in those areas. So that, mm -hmm. that's, that's an interesting one. Um, so right now, you know, you're committed to Pitt, but there's two guys that's, you know, linked to Pitt, and they, you know, they're on the D-line too. What would it mean to you if you guys got Elliot Donald and um, Dorian Ford? I would just like – them them two – I talked to them outside of football and inside of football. You know, I knew Dorian since Little League. Me and uh, Dorian used to play little against each other. You know, we always used to be in the championships together. We always used to go at each other because we play such similar position. But, yeah, man, uh, Elliot, Elliot's my boy, too. You know, we're from the same place. You know, we talk a lot. I talk to both of them a lot. And it would, it would definitely mean a lot. Well, I mean, I feel like with us, we could definitely change the culture around, you know what I'm saying? Especially with uh, Dayon. Dayon's another one, too. He's in a circle with us, but he's yeah. a little bit older. So, you know what I'm saying? It would, we would definitely change the culture around, you know what I'm saying? And I, I know those two, they like really, they really like to go at it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, they're competitive. I mean, would, I'll tell you what. I, I'd be, I wouldn't want to be a quarterback standing across from that defensive line. I'll tell you that much. Yes, sir. <laughs> So, you know, people, will, you know, might not be aware of this, um, but your sophomore year into your junior year, you transferred from Steel Valley uh, to West Mifflin. You know, 
what what made you transfer? Um, honestly, it wasn't even uh, my decision. You know, people think it was because, oh, because of this, or, oh, the coach just left, and uh, he's following the coach. But actually, previously, from the um, – from the season ending, my mother was already talking about moving because uh, because of the house we were uh, staying in wasn't, you know, it just wasn't big enough for me because she knew I was a growing boy and I needed like a space that I'm in now, you know, that I have a bigger room so I could do more stuff, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So we were already talking about moving. We looked at a lot of houses in the uh, Homestead and uh, Munhall area, but no houses we really seen was really like particular. And then, you know, we tried to find a house that was closer super close you know we looked at a couple places but uh the house that we just ended up at was at west mifflin and it's literally like five minutes away not, not even five like literally like two minutes away from the house i was living in, in munhall because munhall and, and um, god west mifflin are like right beside each other and, and that's the thing is like so often um you know it's just like those those close lines where it's like you live on this side of the road instead of this side of the road you go to a different school <laughs> so people give you a hard time and, and which brings me to my next thing is how worried were you going into your junior year which is always a big recruiting year that you weren't going to get to play because the Whippeal originally said you were ineligible to play your junior year um honestly that that was like a really really that actually was a really big factor on me you know what I'm saying because I was like I was going all these play my team we do seven on seven and like I would go to the seven on seven but I wouldn't really participate because we we weren't sure if I was going to play and we were trying to get the next guys ready to play so you know what I'm saying I would still play but like I wouldn't play as much and they're like you know why is that kid that kid they all all heard about me and like why is he saying out da, 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 da. but then they all knew my situation but it was it was a lot of pressure especially like mentally you know like training in the summer you know what I'm saying pushing myself and then I'm like, wow, what if I do all this and, that, like, I can't even play? But at the end of the day, it's, you know what I mean? It all worked out for the best. So I'm, I'm glad that I, I still did everything that I was supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? I never missed a workout. I've been to every event that my team was at. You know, I supported my team, and I just kept grinding. I grinded through it. And that's, that's the, you know, great thing to hear is, you know, you're uncertain about your future um, at that point, but the idea is you're like, Hey man, my, even, even if I can't suit up, my team needs me, I'm going to be there, you know, for moral support. Um, and, and like you said, if I am going to get to play, I want to be ready. So you're not missing a workout and, you know, just keep grinding, like you said. So that's, that's awesome to hear. Um, but I could see that like mental pressure. That'd be, that'd be rough. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot. And it was a lot of, there was a lot of things said. Sure. And like, like you said, you know, with all the kids on here, um, you know, I always ask them like if they have anything to tell like younger athletes and a lot of them ring the same kind of thing, which is like, you know, ignore the hate, which is like, it, it's, 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 it's so tough, man. Like you're a 17 year old kid living out your dream. And the fact that people are still going to hate on you being like, Oh, you know, he's doing this for this reason. And yada, yada, yada. Mm -hmm. It just sucks, man. Like I wish people could just appreciate your talent and just, yeah. Because there's, like, a lot of people out here who's just going to be like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, what position do you play? You tell them your position. Oh, you, you you don't look like you play this. You look like you play this. Oh, you're not big enough. Oh, the way you live. Oh, you're not strong. Like, there's just a whole bunch of psychological stuff that goes into it. But, like, at the end of the day, it, uh, the younger kids that are coming up, oh, yeah, I always just tell them, like, just keep grinding. You know, don't listen to any of them. Don't listen to, oh, you're supposed to weigh this much. Oh, you're supposed to bench this much. You know what I'm saying? Dude. Just keep grinding, you know what I'm saying? You get better every day. And absolutely. And then people want to compare you to other people at your same position and be like, oh, well, you know what? So-and-so is better than you. And it's like, well, I'm my own player. Like, I can do this better. They might be better at me than, you know, this aspect, but you're you're your own individual player, you know? So it drives mm -hmm. me crazy. Um, so, you know, you end up choosing Pitt, and I said you were from Steel Valley. Um, and one of the, you know, best players on Pitt, which is Paris Ford's from Steel Valley, did he play a factor into you going to Pitt? And, like, how close were you guys, you know, growing up? My dad. My dad and his dad are really close friends, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they grew up together. They're both from Garfield. You know, they grew up together. Uh, my dad, uh, he, uh, he always tells me the stories of how uh, when uh, Paris used to come in the house, he used to have Paris run to the store for him and stuff. So, yeah, Paris knows my dad. Uh, me and Paris, we weren't really that close growing up, but like I, I always heard about him because of how so much good of a football player he was. Not he knew of me, and I knew of him. And you know, when we met, you know, we chopped it up like we was really cool. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my uh, dad always tells him that's my cousin, but we're not 
actually related, but that's how close he is to his dad. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, when I whenever I get the chance to talk to Paris, it's always a good talk because he can actually relate to me as another hometown kid. You know what I'm saying? Growing up in almost the same place that I grew up. You know what I'm saying? Same circumstances, same everything. Absolutely, and that's just you know it's a cool thing. Like I always, you know, some players like you know Ty Law when he was inducted to the the Hall of Fame, you know, from Aliquippa was like I needed to get out of here. You know, some people do need to change the scenery because of you know certain circumstances. But it's always cool when people are like proud of their city and they choose to stick it out. You know what I mean? And rep the city. So yeah. Paris is another one of those guys. Mm-hmm. Now, watching your film, you you know aren't really necessarily on the outside of the line a lot. Um, you're usually like, you know, I see a three technique sometimes, maybe a five. Um, but Pitt's listing you, or some, is listing you as an outside linebacker. Is that what you're going to play in college? Uh, honestly, I just feel like I could play any position on the field. So whatever position Pitt would decide to put me at is the position I'm going to play. I'm not going to complain. You know, if Pitt were to put me at outside linebacker, I would play outside linebacker. If Pitt were to put me at defensive tackle, I would play defensive tackle. If they put me at DN, they were even talking about before when they was recruiting me, putting me at tight end because, you know, I also play tight end on offense. But, like, whatever position that gets me on the field fastest is the position I'm going to play, you know. I really don't – I try to look at myself as an athlete, you know what I'm saying. I try to get as much work in as much as I can, you know what I'm saying, to be listed as an athlete. That's what I actually want to be listed as, as an athlete because I don't feel like one position just – verifies me you know because I could play any position I like that you know just and you know you I've heard some of the other kids say it of um they just want to whatever gets them on the field whatever helps the team get W's um is what they want to do so that's that's really cool mm-hmm. now have you been working on you know if you're going to play all the sideline backers you need to work on your, your zone drops um and man coverage have you been working on, on that this offseason yeah, when I was uh when I was younger, I used to play a lot of uh, seven on seven. You know, I, they always used to put me at middle linebacker. So yeah, I feel like I have been working on my dropbacks and all this stuff. I've been working out with the cornerbacks actually. Uh, that's okay. a lot of field work I've been doing is with the quarterbacks. I mean, I mean corner cornerbacks and the wide receivers, so I could work on my footwork at tight end and then my drops and stuff in case I did have to drop into like a um, package or something. Because I feel like uh, this season we will be doing a lot of stuff where I have to drop back in coverage. Sure, and it's just the idea where, you know, if you rush, and, you know, James Harrison, a, a Pittsburgh mm-hmm. guy, is an easy example. You knew he was going to rush the quarterback 95% of the time, but one of the biggest plays in his career, if not the biggest, is that pick that he had that he drops back and robs the quarterback and, you know, takes it 100 yards for a touchdown. And it's that idea that, like, you know, as long as you have that in your back pocket, they can't 100% say you're, you're coming at the quarterback, which is mm-hmm. just important. You're just one of them players that, like, always keeps the uh, – offensive coordinator guessing like what is he going to do you know what I'm saying because you could do all this other stuff you can line up on any side of the ball like you just always want to keep him guessing like you don't know what he's doing it's like I, that's what an exciting player is you know what I'm saying somebody who always keeps somebody guessing like what is he going to do next like oh he just got to pick six. Oh, he just got to sack now what is your fumble recovery you know what I'm saying I, I 100% agree with you on that um what have or, let me start here what do you think the best part of your game is the best part of my game, every, but every time every, somebody watches my game and uh, watches my film and sees my film, they always say my first step and my speed. That's, that's what most people point out about me. They say my first step is, like, lethal. And uh, my speed after the first step that I could just kill an offensive tackle, offensive guard, anything, they, that's what they always talk about. I think, I think your first steps, you know, exceptional. Um, I think your moves are extremely tight. Um, one of the things that at, that, at this level uh, that really stood out to me was like, when you get your hands on somebody, man, you finish it. Like you, you got that kill shot in you. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys get there kind of fall to their knees or don't necessarily drive through the person. Like some of your hits honestly remind me of like a Jadavion Clowney kind of hit where it's like, I'm glad I'm not that running back. You know, it's that kind of hit. So I definitely think that's another part of your game. That's, that's strong. Honestly, when I uh when I go for the hit, you know what I'm saying? I always – I don't know. I just, like, I go to a different zone because on the field, you know, I, I get really angry, you know what I'm saying? Everybody who goes against me is just like my – I just I just won't want to line up against me, honestly. And when I hit, I just want to take their head off their shoulders. Like, the bigger, the bigger the hit, the more satisfied I am, you know what I'm saying? If the ball doesn't come out, then I'm, I'm not happy with the hit, you know what I'm saying? I want, I want somebody's helmet to fly off. No, definitely, I, I, and it shows. 
when I was younger, I always used to turn on uh, before a little league game. I used to look up uh, NFL hardest hits, and I used to just watch every. I used to watch Ray Lewis, Patrick Willis, Ed Reed. I always, I, I, I always wanted to be a linebacker because of the way they hit, man. I just always wanted to get a hit stick, one of them ooh hits where you hear the whole crowd go ooh. I love that feeling. That's the, that's the best feeling of football to me. No, that, that's cool. Yeah, I, I definitely feel you on that. And what would you say is your biggest aspect you're trying to improve upon um, in your game? Improve upon, um, like you were saying, you know, I, I want to be able to do more outside linebacker stuff like dropping in the coverage. I definitely want to improve on that. And um, just my skill set, because I feel like, um, you know what I mean? When I, when I enter a game, you know, I have one move. I have one move just in my head, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to plan a move. I want to be able to, like, you know what I'm saying, go as the game's going, like, base my moves off of what he's doing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, that's, that's really I smart. Just, just a, go ahead. Better skill set. Better, um, better move skill set, basically. I want to learn more moves. Your, your swim's real tight, um, and, but it's the idea that if you swim, 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 um, mm. you know, the tackles and guards are going to set up against that, where if you come with a, a counter rip or a spin mm -hmm. off of it or a bull rush, um, it's just that kind of – it makes that swim that much harder to stop. Mm -hmm. That's why I like Coach Partridge so much from Pitt, the defensive line coach. You know, he always tells me, you know what I'm saying. Uh, he always t uh, compares uh, my game to um, some of the players he got, and he says uh, – Patrick Jones, one of the defensive ends that's um, a senior this year, he says what he does is he goes into the game, you know what I'm saying, he might start, he'd start straight with power. It doesn't matter what they're doing, power, power, power. And then that's when he gets a little finesse in there, you know what I'm saying? So maybe it would be power, 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 speed. Then speed, yeah. speed, power, you know what I'm saying? He switches it up. And that, that's what the best pass rushers do is you don't know what they're going to hit you with. So you're constantly, if you're trying to set a hard anchor and they speed rush you, I mean, you're toast. Um, mm -hmm. But if you don't set that hard anchor, we see like sometimes like, you know, offensive tackles fear clear uh, Cleo max speed. And so they're so worried about trying to get to the corner on them that he bull rushes them and just makes them look like children, you know? So it's so we're exactly. definitely, a, if you, if you wanted to watch somebody's highlights to base your game off of Khalil Max, definitely a, definitely a good one a great one oh he's, absolutely he's, he's just amazing um so do you have any idea what you might want to study at Pitt study I'm thinking about um business 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 and management you know what I'm saying uh my mom was talking to me about it and it would be something but as of right now I'm not really that sure but um yeah. I'm thinking I'm still thinking about it you got plenty of time mm. give me a bold prediction about your future a bold prediction. I, I'm not going to talk about uh, this football season coming up because I'm still not sure if we're going to be able to play in the playoffs yet. But uh, I'll talk about I'll talk about my prediction at Pitt. Uh, hopefully, if I come in, you know what I'm saying. I'm I'm trying to see the field as uh, as fast as I can, so I'm gonna go in there and work my butt off. But uh, if I don't uh, start my freshman season, then hopefully I get to start. I'm seeing. Hopefully, Elliot's there with me. Hopefully, Dorian's there with me. You know, I already know Dayon's going to be there with me. Hopefully, my boys is there with me. You know what I'm saying? Um, I definitely see a I definitely see an ACC championship. You know what I'm saying? I know, I I know from being at the games. You know, everybody in Pittsburgh they always say we want Clemson, and I, I want I want Clemson. I want to go against the best. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I like it. I, I see ACC championship. I like it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would that would definitely be fun. I, I would be down for that. Mm -hmm. If the, like the Pittsburgh boys just took the pit on a ride to the ACC championship, hopefully in Natty, that that would be that would be amazing. Another, you know, little little south of Pittsburgh, but uh, a kid that would help out is um Donovan McMillan. Donovan McMillan. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I just uh, got done talking to him. I was talking to him. I never met him. But, I, you know, I heard so much about him. Everybody was talking about him. I was like, let me hit him up and see what he's up to. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I was texting him. I was telling him what's up. I seen his highlights. You know he's a great kid. Hopefully we could get him down pit. Yeah. So, no, that would be a great one. My last question for you is do you have any messages um, for young athletes watching at home? Like I said, just keep grinding. You know, one of the things that I heard, 
that like always stuck with me is hard work pays off. And no matter what it is in life, no matter like what you're doing, hard work will pay off. Hard work does not go out without notice. You know what I'm saying? I see the way work ethic, work ethic is always one of the biggest things that people look into in somebody, you know, it's not how big they are, how big you could be the biggest dude and be the most cockiest. Like, Oh man, I'm huge. I don't need to go lift. But like people are going to notice the guy who's there every single day working their butt off, getting stronger. And it eventually is going to show because you're not going to keep working without, you know, without your body blowing up. You know what I'm saying? When I came into high school, I was, what was I? I was like 185. I was like, I was like a skinny, slim kid. You know what I'm saying? I came in there, but I worked every day to get where I'm at now. You know what I'm saying? And over time, progression happens over time you know you know what I'm saying you don't want to rush anything because when I was younger they always used to tell me I was too skinny I tried taking a premiere all this stuff but like it all it all comes over time you just got to keep working and and honestly as as a coach um I would much rather have I'd much rather have the kid who's willing to run through a wall for you and just work his tail off than the kid who's more talented who doesn't want to put in the work who doesn't want to follow the game plan um, so I completely agree with you, man. Hard work, definitely everybody notices it. Because I have had teammates that was like that. Like, I don't, I'm not going to put anybody's name out there, but like, uh, my coach, my coach Rod, he always said, look like Tarzan, play like Jane. And, you know what I'm saying? They would be the biggest ones, but when they go out to the field, they were shook because they didn't, they didn't work as hard. You know what I'm saying? You're right, man. I like that. I've never heard that. Look like Tarzan, play like Jane. When he said that, I used to die. That used to be old. <laughs> Okay, so let's do some rapid fire questions. All right. All right. First one Pac or Biggie? Biggie, Biggie. Okay. Favorite ice cream flavor? Favorite ice cream, uh, mint chocolate chip. Okay. Funniest movie you've ever seen? Funniest. Uh, Malibu's Most Wanted. That movie is hilarious. <laughs> that movie is hilarious. Scariest movie you've ever seen? Insidious. Ooh, okay, that's a good one. Um, favorite stand-up comedian? Favorite stand-up comedian? Uh, I'm gonna just say Kevin Hart. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Um, Batman or Superman? Batman, definitely. A hundred percent. I'm with. I'm, I don't like Superman. It's like cheat codes. He's got too mm -hmm. many powers. <laughs> Batman has a, a Pittsburgh movie. Oh, there you go. <laughs> right there. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kobe or LeBron? Ah. <sighs> RP to Kobe, but I'm, I'm going to have to say LeBron. I'm have to say LeBron. I, I got to go Kobe, man. Kobe was my guy. Um, what is your favorite food that a lot of people don't like? Favorite food that a lot of people don't like? Jeez. I say tacos, maybe. Because I, I don't know. A lot, of people, a lot of people, I don't know. A lot of people around here don't like Taco Bell. I can see that. I can see that. Now, do you have a food that you do not like that everybody else likes? Um, apple pie, uh, pie period. I don't, I don't, I don't like pie. I'm with you. I don't like, I don't like cake or pie. No, no cake. Yeah, I love cake, but pie. yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm not much of a sweet guy. Like I'll eat some ice cream, but like mm, I, I'm, I'm same. I'm same. I don't really eat sweets all like that. But when I do, you know, yeah. <laughs> um, tell me something about yourself that n many people don't know. Many people don't know. I real. I'm real like my hair. I'm I'm a, I'm a big hair guy. You know what I'm saying? I'm a big hair guy. I love my hair. I gotta be. I, I'm. You got pretty cool hair. Yeah. Thanks. Like thanks, I man. got. I'm going bald, man. It's just. It's not. It's not nearly as fly. <laughs> man, I really. I really care about my hair. Every time you see a video of me, I'm like doing this. I'm surprised I didn't do it through this interview. I tried. I. I, I was trying not to, but you know, I'm <laughs> really conceited about my hair. I always love them. Like players have like the like the dreads hanging out of the back of the helmet. Mm -hmm. I always think it looks so sick. Yeah. Eventually, eventually, whenever uh, I feel like I feel like when I get up there, I'm I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna get to the dreads. I feel you on that. Um, what is the your favorite sports moment that you've ever seen, like in professional sports? My favorite what? Um, sports moment. Moment. Oh man, it had to be when uh. The Steelers came back and beat the Patriots whenever uh, Joe Hayden got the last pick over Ron Gronkowski. That, what was that? That was like two years ago, a year ago? Two years ago. Yeah, two years ago, man. I was like, yes, because it was 
Oh, it's always there's Pittsburgh people who like the Patriots, and we was going back and forth on Facebook. And like when that happened, man, I just went to Facebook like, now nah, what? Now nah, what? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, he was real with the Pittsburgh Patriots. God, I, not not a Patriots fan, man. I'm glad Brady's gone. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely glad. I'm definitely glad. And then last question is, who is your celebrity crush? Celebrity crush. I have to say Lauren London. Lauren London. I like the light skins. Yeah, Lauren London. I, I don't know if I know who Lauren London is. Lauren London. That was uh, Nipsey Hussle's wife. Oh, okay. Okay. She, she was in, Um, you ever watch ATL? Uh, yeah. ATL. Yeah, it was uh, Nunu from ATL. Okay. I got yeah. you. I got you. That's about all I have for you. Um, I appreciate you coming on the show, man. It was, you know, a lot of fun. Um, it's really cool just like hearing your story about, you know, staying local, you know, trying to wrap the city. Um, you know, we're glad to keep you here um, for as long as we can. And, uh, you know, I know I'm rooting for you. Um, I know the rest of Pittsburgh's pulling for you. So, you know, the best of luck in the future. And again, thank you for coming on the show. No problem. Thank you for having me on the show, man. This was this was a nice experience. Uh, this was a good talk. Good talk. It was a good right, talk. Man. I'm glad you had a good time. And uh, hey, guys, make sure you tune in because on Wednesday I have Aliquippa Zone Zariah Fisher. So um, if you like our content, make sure you click the like and subscribe button. And I'll see you next time. Next time.